Today and for uh, the next two weeks, uh, we're going to be studying what for many uh, engineers and a few scientists is the most popular method of solving any differential equation that they, of the kind that they happen to meet, and that is to use the popular machine called the Laplace transform. Now, uh, you'll get proficient in using it by the end of the two weeks, uh, but there's always a certain amount of mystery that hangs around it, and people scratch their heads and can't figure out where it comes from. Uh, and that bothers them a lot. In the past, I've usually promised to tell you at the end of the students at the end of the two weeks, but I almost never have time, so I'm going to break that glorious tradition and tell you up front at the beginning where it comes from, uh, and then talk very fast for the rest of the period. Uh, okay. A good way of thinking of where Laplace transform comes from in a way which I think dispels some of its mystery is by thinking of power series. I think virtually all of you have studied power series except uh, possibly a few students uh, uh, who just had 1801 here last semester and probably shouldn't be taking 1803 anyway now. But anyway, uh, a power series looks like this. Summation a n x to the n, and you sum that from, let's say, 0 to infinity. And uh, the typical thing you want to do with it is add it up to find out what its sum is. Now, the only way I'll depart from tradition, instead of calling the sum some generic name like f of x, in order to identify the sum with the coefficients, a, I'll call it a of x. Now, I want to make just one slight change in that. Uh, slight change in this. Uh, I want to use computer notation, which doesn't use a subscript a sub n. Instead, it this it thinks of as a function of the discrete variable n. In other words, it's a function which assigns to n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, real numbers. That's what these sequence of coefficients really is. So in computer notation, it will look almost the same. It's just that I'll write this in functional notation as a of n instead of a sub n. But it still means the real number associated with the integer, positive integer n. And everything else is the same. See, what I'm thinking of this as doing is taking this discrete function, which gives me the sequence of coefficients of the power series, and associating that with the sum of the power series. Let me give you some very simple examples, of two very simple examples, which I think you know. Suppose this is the function 1. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean it's the constant function 1. To every positive integer, it assigns the number 1. OK, what's a of x? What I'm saying is, in other words, in this fancy mystifying form, if all of these guys are 1, what's a of x? 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. Look, you were supposed to be born knowing what that adds up to. It adds up to 1 over 1 minus x, except that's the wrong answer. What's wrong about it? It's not true for every value of x. That's only true when x is such that that series converges. And that has to be, is only true when x lies between negative 1 and 1. So it's not this function. It's this function with its domain restricted to be less than 1 in absolute value. What does that converge to if x is bigger than 1? The answer is it doesn't converge. It's nothing. There's nothing to add up else you can put here. OK, let's take another function. Uh, suppose this is, um, let's see, 1 over n you probably won't know. Uh, let's take one you will know, 1 over n factorial. Suppose a of n is the function 1 over n factorial. What's a of x? So what I'm asking is, what does this add up to when the coefficient here is 1 over n factorial. What's summation x to the n over n factorial? It is e to the x. And this doesn't have to be qualified, because this is true for all values of x. So 
So in other words, from this peculiar point of view, I think of a power summing, the operation of summing a power series as taking a discrete function defined for positive integers, for non-negative integers, and doing this funny process, and out of it comes a continuous function of some sort. And notice what goes in is the variable n, but what comes out is the variable x. Well, that's perfectly natural. That's the way a power series is set up. 